Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to AI for Good, all year, always online. I'm Charlotte Kahn presenting AI for Good Perspectives. AI for Good is a year-round digital platform where AI innovators and problem owners learn, build and connect to identify practical AI solutions to advance the UN SDGs. AI for Good Perspectives offer expert insights, global visions and shared solutions from the AI for Good community. Now, how often do you think there must be an easier way to do this if only I had an app for that? Now, did you know that you can develop your own software without knowing how to code? Low-code, no-code software development is a growing trend in the digitalization of enterprises. It can also be an important tool to democratize digital tools in societies. So let's listen to Shell and Microsoft as they reflect on the potential of low-code, no-code software development in progressing the UN SDGs. I am very pleased to be joined today by Ryan Cunningham, Vice President, Microsoft Power Apps, and Paul Kobylansky, General Manager, Low-Code, No-Code Software Development and Power Platforms at Shell, as well as Michelle Snyders, Environmental Coordinator at Shell Energy and Chemicals Park in Rotterdam. Thank you very much for joining us. Great to be with and you. Thank you for having us. Lovely to have you on board. Now, uh, let's start with, uh, with Ryan. Uh, first of all, Ryan, can you introduce yourself and tell us in very simple words what low-code and no-code software development is all about? Absolutely. So uh, my name is Ryan. I lead uh, the, the low-code, no-code offering team at Microsoft. That's called Power Apps. Um, and, uh, and Charlotte, I thought you actually captured it uh, quite well in your introduction. You know, the low-code, no-code is probably the least creatively named uh, software uh, category on the planet today. It's really about reducing or entirely eliminating the need for traditional software code when building uh, solutions, including innovative solutions uh, that use AI and, uh, and other advanced capabilities today. Um, and it's really about democratizing and extending who can solve problems and how quickly they can be solved. Uh, really important for areas that need rapid new thinking and rapid innovation from a range of experts, uh, like many of the ones that we'll talk about today. Absolutely, thank you very much, Ryan. Let's join Paul now. Paul, could you introduce yourself as well and maybe say a few words about low-code, no-code software development at Shell? Sure, so Paul Kablansky, and as I said, uh, head up citizen development or low code, no code developments at Shell. Uh, we also refer to it as DIY or do it yourself development. So essentially at Shell, we run a center of expertise that aims to provide all of the developers across the company with the training, the tools, the support, and also the confidence to solve the problems closest to themselves. A real core and integral part of that is also providing secure access to data because without data, you cannot do DIY. That's a little bit about me. Thank you very much. Then talk to Michelle now. Michelle, tell us about who you are, what you do, and your low-code, no-code approach. Yes. Hi, I'm uh, Michel Sneijders, an environmental coordinator at Shell Energy and Chemical Park Rotterdam. Uh, with my team, we, amongst others, uh, are looking after our water treatment procedures. Uh, we advise teams in our refinery on what we must be done to comply with uh, environmental legislation when releasing water back into the environment. An essential step is to gather information on oncoming water discharges. It means we look at water that will be sent to the unit through the water treatment facilities. That's been in a nutshell. Thank you very much. So we'll take a look at the application you have developed a little bit later. But for the moment, I'd like to go back to Ryan to ask you, Ryan, how is citizen development transforming the access to digital tools and skills? Uh, well, Charlotte, you know, one of the things about software is that, uh, you know, we tend to focus only on one type of expertise when we think about developers and engineers. We focus on technical expertise. Uh, but, uh, but like we just heard from Michelle, 
there's a whole other type of important expertise in every single business problem in every single uh, you know situation and nobody on the planet is more uh, qualified to think about something like water quality and and water handling at shell than michelle and his team and so citizen development really shortens the distance between those two types of expertise you know what does it take to build a great solution and what does it take to actually get it out there in the world that's really how it's transforming the way organizations work it, it compresses the development development cycle, but it also brings other types of expertise to the table to be hands on in building those solutions. Um, that's what creates the, the real transformative engine for organizations like Shell. Thank you. I'd like to ask a similar question to, to Paul. Paul, how is citizen development transforming the digital literacy at Shell? Well, firstly, DIY is a, a critical part of our overall digital transformation strategy. And what it's doing is really enabling us to do more, to take on more digital work by addressing the, the tail end of opportunities that we have at pace, like Ryan shared, and in a secure way. Whether that be around visualizing data, whether it be around taking out paper, automating a process. If you look at it though, however, this is really about availability. So making these technologies and platforms available to everybody in Shell, but also accessibility. So if we think about this, the, the tools and technologies, the, the intelligence or the code is under the hood. And what it provides is an environment which is much more intuitive, an interface that is focused on drag and drop or low code that enables ease of use. It's also, I would say, a great medium for experimentation, uh, learning, and uh, doing things collaboratively. And if I could just give you an example, we were uh, just a couple of weeks ago with one of our businesses in Norway, um, also with a team of students from the local university. And in two days, we developed four working applications or products using business data. Now, if I was to go back maybe 10 years and we did a two-day workshop, we may come out with lots of paper. And maybe just five years ago, we may come out with uh, some, some wireframes. So I think it's incredible, you know, that, that pace, that uh, accessibility and the intuition now today makes it uh, go much faster. Thank you. I'd like to go back to Ryan. Ryan, are there any industries or businesses that are particularly advanced in adopting uh, citizen developments? Could you share maybe some examples with us? Absolutely, Charlie. You know, we're seeing acceleration in low code, particularly on the Microsoft platform across really every sector of the economy. Now, uh, more than 97% of the Fortune 500 are using Power Platform and we're growing exponentially. Uh, but we're seeing particular energy in industries that have, you know, very particular types of needs, and, and the energy industry is absolutely one of them. Um, you know, we're also seeing in in, in sectors and in, in government applications, in finance, uh, in uh, uh, you know, a whole range of of sort of frontline worker intensive industries, whether that's telecom or manufacturing. You know, all of these are places where uh, there really is no app for that in many many parts of the organization. Uh, because their processes are highly specialized and changing and evolving in real time. And, and when you mix that need with a workforce that is highly skilled, uh, you know, in the case of uh, Shell, lots of smart people with, uh, with either engineering degrees or process expertise or other forms of, of input, they just didn't uh, study computer science. Um, you bring those two worlds together, you see really great acceleration. And so, uh, you know, some of the types of things we've talked about here with Shell are very exciting, but we've also seen, you know, customers really do transformative things at uh, even national government scale in response to, uh, you know, public health crises of the last few years in response to changing uh, financial and regulatory regimes, and in response to the changing nature of, of a lot of equipment and material intensive businesses, um, of which Shell is, is definitely a, ahead of the curve in, in driving a lot of that innovation as well. Now, Paul, let's look at citizen development a little bit further in, in practice. Your industry is uh, an industry that pays a lot of attention to safety, for instance. So how do you make citizen development work safely or in order to promote safety in your industry? Yeah, it's a, it's a great point, Charlotte. And uh, indeed, uh, safety is, uh, is, is paramount to us. I could probably draw this along the axis of people, process, and, uh, and technology. So first and foremost, if we talk about some of the processes, what we've put in place is sound governance and an operating model so that 
every developer has a secure environment within which to operate, but also where their solutions or developments are uh, assessed alongside risk and, uh, and complexity. And so we have a particular zoning strategy where people can develop freely within a green zone. Uh, we also offer up a partnered zone, which puts extra eyes and controls on that development. And we clearly have those sorts of solutions that are high risk, high complexity, that are done by your traditional IT department. When we look at uh, people and we take the people angle, this is about providing the training, uh, providing the support through uh, boot camps and hackathons, but also ensuring that we've got a community-based model and approach in place. So our coaches for every community are paramount, are important in the way in which they are guardians of the process, in which they offer up consultancy advice and make sure that things are done safely as well. And I think what's happening is within industry, we're seeing a lot of distilling of professional development practice actually lend itself into this citizen development or low code environment. And I think finally, you know, working with partners uh, such as Ryan, we look at the technology. So providing these purpose-built environments that are made for this type of work, but also provide the AI under the hood and the analytics to make sure that we're doing things uh, safely and intelligently as we go. Absolutely. And could you share maybe some examples of low-code, no-code apps at Shell, which are having a positive impact on your employees, your operations, and your customers? Well, I'd love to. And this is a, a joy of my role because we have solutions that uh, continue to come out each week. But let me take uh, three tangible examples. So I think, first and foremost, we, we talked about safety and uh, well-being. And Prelude is one of our floating LNG facilities off the coast of Australia, where we have to also comply with maritime and international standards. We have to record uh, people's work patterns, uh, both in terms of re rest and activity on that particular asset. And much of that was paper-based. Yeah? So the team there took it in their own hands to develop a, an application called the Fatigue Management Application. And they've really taken that one step further. It's improved health, it improves our overall understanding of planning for the facility and uh, forecasting in terms of uh, resourcing needs. So that's one in terms of safety and well-being. Another one would be around energy. Uh, so we're talking about AI for good. And if we look at energy optimization, we have a wonderful team at the same product and chemicals park in the Netherlands who've used a low-code, no-code platform to collect additional data points around the setting and the performance of furnaces that are used to power that plant. They've augmented those processes, they've captured that data, they've used those insights to learn to improve the overall energy efficiency of that plant, which is also good for the planet. And finally, if we talk about customer, so we have a number of emerging uh, sectors where our sales executives um, are asked and confronted with questions around um, the product's carbon footprint. And so in this case, uh, these requests could come in through maybe conversations or email or other channels. And the team had taken it upon themselves again to use the low-code, no-code environments that we have to digitize that process, to make sure that we're providing accurate information back to our customers, but also improving the responsiveness as well. So I think these are three examples where you can see that teams are solving problems for themselves, but also doing that with agility and, uh, and at pace. And I think that's the perfect introduction for Michelle to tell us a bit more about the very wide scope of use cases. Now, uh, Michelle, tell us about the, the app you have developed. In order to comply with uh, legalization uh, and Shell's own strict procedures, um, we have multiple teams seeking information uh, about prov and providing data. These, these processes represent hundreds of pages of, of text. And you can imagine that uh, these are strong, there's a strong drive to streamline these, these processes. In the past, getting this information uh, would be typically done by a complex form of a spreadsheet and uh, shared by email. Uh, using low-code, no-code tools, we centralize its autom this automation and autom automatize the information and management process in order to better handle these complex procedures uh, as one team. And can you explain very briefly and in very simple terms how the app works, please? 
Uh, our, our app is simply an end user interface, which provides uh, a form to fill in and all information which is required by different departments and involved in the discharge process, uh, the database behind the forms integrated in our current office environment uh, for the refinery. Okay, so a much uh, easier process for the end users, but what a positive impact do you think this app um, can also have for the community around the refinery? Well, I see three benefits. Um, one, with better data on what we are coming up, uh, what's coming up uh, to our water treatment facility, we can better clean the water before it's released into the environment. And also, we are more efficient to spot and address unusual requests. Uh, we can better involve the right exports in a case-to-case -case basis. And eventually, we have more and better data, which makes our auditing and external controls uh, easier. We believe that it gives the regulators a better knowledge of our operations. And uh, yeah, to finish, we're proud of this simple centralized automized, automized information sharing tool uh, because uh, it's, in, it's indeed many benefits for our operations and our communities. But also I learned that, uh, that citizen development is not about doing it alone, but do it together. And that's all about uh, working in teams. So it was fine to, uh, to have this uh, around and have a uh, better knowledge of each other's uh, work processes and solve the problems around it. Fantastic. So many benefits for the local communities as well as the enterprise, the business overall. Thank you very much. Um, closing remarks, I guess, and final thoughts. Ryan, after hearing Michel's testimony and the impact of his uh, app on the community, how do you feel and what are your impressions? Well, I, I love the example because it's it's really a, a great uh, encapsulation of how low code is working on multiple levels. Um, you know, one, uh, you know, most importantly, you know, if we are going to evolve our processes and and push towards a, a cleaner future, you know, we we really have to get better data at the very end of the process. And today, that's very inefficient for a lot of processes, and and not out of any. Uh, you know, desire to be inefficient, but just out of the way, a lot of these systems were built I I initially and, and being able to move from, you know, a scattered set of emails and spreadsheets into a robust piece of software is a major step forward for, uh, you know, not just for the individuals working that process, but really all the, the broader benefits that we can, we can create from it um, that, that Michelle just outlined. But the how it came together is critical too. Uh, you know, that piece of software didn't exist before because the business case and the, uh, the the sort of practicalities of traditional software development just didn't make it possible. But being able to work together, I love that phrase from Michelle, you know, being able to come together between people who understand the process and people who understand software, um, that's what's really driving the innovation in the space is, is that way of working together. So I'm, I'm super excited and enthusiastic to hear this example. And I know there are hundreds more like it just within uh, this organization, let alone uh, many others like it around the world. Thank you. Any final thoughts from Paul and Michelle? I mean, I must admit that I was uh, really pleased to hear that Michelle, who does not necessarily have, you know, the technical skills that were traditionally involved in the development of a app, was able to develop one with such a, an impact. Yeah, I think in Shell today, we have uh, many wonderful cases uh, like Michelle, where people have started out on their journeys. Um, we talked about process and really empowering them through these new platforms. And what we're seeing overall is increased productivity. Uh, we're seeing uh, increased agility and uh, for sure, uh, we've got many more bright stories uh, on the horizon as well. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much to all of you for your accounts and your thoughts today. That's much appreciated. Thank you very much. And thanks to you for watching. Stay tuned for more uh, stories from AI for Good Perspectives all year, always online.